Good morning and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after Epiphany. It's a blessing to be with you this morning. If you're a guest or visitor with us today, a special word of welcome. We're so glad to have you here with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Compassionate God, 
you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, can I hear any horn honking from any kids this morning? All right, a oh, couple late ones there, okay. I would like for you to sing a song with me this morning. And I know you know this one. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. It's kind of hard to stomp in a car, so let's do the amen one, okay? If you're happy and you know it, shout amen, amen. If you're happy and you know it, shout amen, amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout amen, amen. Thank you for singing with me. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about joy and having a joyful spirit. When you were baptized, you were given the gift of the Holy Spirit within you. And we say that that is a spirit of joy and a spirit of peace. Well, you know, joy means happiness, being happy. But the beautiful thing about joy when it comes from God through the Holy Spirit is even if things aren't going great, even if you have to do something you really don't want to do, or if you have to wait a long time for something, you can still have joy even if you don't feel excited about something. That is the spirit of joy that we get from God. And you can ask the Holy Spirit to help you and say, Lord, help me to have joy in this tough moment, or help me to have a spirit of cheerfulness when I'm helping someone else. Today we hear a story where Jesus meets a man who has an unclean spirit. He has a bad spirit. It's making him do things and act in ways that are not God's ways. But Jesus comes in and he says, no, come out, you unclean spirit, and make room in this person who is my beloved child, room for a spirit of God. That's God's way, is for us to be filled with the spirit that gives us joy and peace. And peace means that we know that even if things are hard or frustrating or we have to wait or we are not sure what's going to happen next, we're confused, that we know God is with us and we're going to be okay. So this week I want you to remember that even if everything isn't going your way, you have been given a spirit of joy and a spirit of peace. And Jesus can help you, just like he helped the man with the unclean spirit, Jesus can help you 
feel that joy, that cheerfulness, and that peace any time you ask him to. Can we have a prayer about that together? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. He gives us a spirit of joy and a spirit of peace in our baptism. Give us this joy and peace always so we may serve you cheerfully. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered a synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having an authority, not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. How clean is your house? Well, if you're anything like me, them's fighting words. At the beginning of this pandemic, when we all thought we were staying home for two weeks, remember 14 days to flatten the curve? Yeah, my house was so clean. I didn't really have anything else to do, so I did laundry, and I scrubbed showers, and I vacuumed carpets. It was nice, actually. But since then, for the most part, our house has been a wreck. Why clean when we're just going to stay home again tomorrow and mess it up all over again? And there's no one coming over to see it, right? If you're anything like me, you may have just stopped paying attention to how dirty the house is. I mean, it's a pandemic. Let's give ourselves a break, right? But on the other hand, we've begun paying a lot more attention to keeping ourselves clean. Wash your hands. Don't touch anything. Wear your mask. Keep your distance. There's something out there that we're trying really hard to stay away from, to scrub off, to disinfect, to ex exterminate. Due to COVID, we have become hyper-focused on cleanliness in a way that may be hard for us to shake even after this is over. We hear a lot about clean and unclean in the Bible. There are lists upon lists of what food, actions, and even people are considered unclean and to be avoided in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, we hear that Jesus interacts with people or spirits that are labeled unclean, like the demon-possessed man that we encounter in Mark today. A demon-possessed man barges in on the Sabbath of all days, bringing with him an unclean spirit into the synagogue of all places, and Jesus stops his teaching in order to confront the spirit and drive out this demon. We see right off in chapter 1 of Mark's gospel that Jesus has come not just to teach, but to act, to end Satan's reign of terror. He's come to clean house. Jesus has come to deal with the forces of death and destruction that threaten the children of God. He's come not only to comfort 
the distressed, but to confront the demons that take hold, that take peace, that take the place of God in our lives. There's something making a mess of this man's life, and Jesus is here to set him straight. How clean is your house? If you turn your gaze inward and take a look around, what do you see within? Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? St. Paul writes to the Corinthians. Don't you know that what's going on in there can either make room for or crowd out the space for the Spirit of God? The Spirit of God deserves a dwelling place that is clean and tidy. So how clean is your house? What kind of temple upkeep routine do you have going on? What kind of living space have you cleared for God to enter in? Or what kind of deferred maintenance do you need to get started on so that your thoughts, your actions, your intentions may be more fully inhabited by the Spirit of God? And what do you need to step aside and have Jesus clean out for you? When you stop and take a closer look, what spiritual clutter do you really need help getting rid of, that emotional baggage that is hard as you try, you need to admit that only Jesus can lift for you. Or what physical ailment do you need to fully and completely place in the hands of your Savior today? Just like with the man in the synagogue, sometimes there are things that if we are honest with ourselves, have moved in and taken over things too strong and too dark for us to keep trying to shake by ourselves. When we're ready to admit it, we see and recognize that in the place of God, an unclean spirit or an unhealthy addiction or an untenable posture is blocking our spiritual health, draining our physical health, maybe even threatening to take over our whole lives. And only Jesus, the Son of God, can re reckon with it. Sometimes we just need to come with our demons exposed before Christ and profess, I know who you are, holy one of God, and confess you alone can make me clean. You alone have the power to defeat the forces which are taking away my life. If we profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we need to recognize when it's time to step aside and let him save us again. How clean is our house as a congregation, as a community, as a nation? What demons do we have lying beneath the surface that we collectively need to lay bare before the Lord of hosts? We're under a lot of pressure, I think, to be that shining city on a hill, and sometimes we choose to bury the issues that really need to be unearthed and dealt with. Here at All Saints, we're a wonderful, welcoming community. We say all are welcome. We say all means all. No judgment. But what little judgments get passed in our minds? or in those private side conversations, or just perpetuated silently by all of us to keep us feeling safe and superior, that keep us from truly living Christ's all-inclusive, radical welcome. Here in our community of Mount Pleasant, we're an all-American city, doggone it. We have great schools, great programs, great opportunities. We're proud of who we are and the ways that we set the standards for others around the low country and the state. But what ugly realities are we willing, unwilling to recognize here? What persistent prejudices 
are we unlikely to name? What injustices are we ready to ignore or more likely just drive by at 55 miles per hour so we don't have to let them burden our consciences or change our plans? And here in America, oh, America, the beautiful, we're the shining beacon on a hill, the bastion of democracy, which stands for liberty and justice for all, right? Well, we hope so. But I think we've begun to see that there are some persistent pockets of malady plaguing us, bubbling to the surface in the form of anti-Semitism, racism, white supremacy, and political hatred all around. Both, most of the time, these forces are easy for us to ignore or to cover up or to overlook. When they're not waving their flags on national TV, but mo those of us involved in the community Bible study can tell you they're never far from the minds of our brothers and sisters of African descent. This community Bible study we've been doing is a beautiful thing, even though it's on Zoom, and that's just a little awkward always. The honesty and openness that we've encountered in only the first two weeks has been truly inspiring. In small groups, we've had the opportunity to share and listen to members of neighboring AME churches sharing their experiences in the context of the study of God's word. And we've been hearing that the trends and the phenomena that we read about, they experience firsthand. The surfacing of hate groups and white supremacist cells in recent months and weeks influenced the choice of facing racism as the curriculum for our annual community Bible study. The leaders in the community realized that it was time to bring it out into the open, to sit down face to face and talk about racism among the members of our congregations in this community. And through the trust that we have been building with our neighbors in the study, we have been able to hear the stories and the witness and the pain that our siblings in Christ carry with them. Their dignity has been rebuffed, their worth undermined at times, and their communities diminished as a result of persistent illness plaguing this nation. And by sitting down and listening, by beginning to get to know each other, perhaps again for the first time as neighbors, we're opening the doors to let Christ enter in and reckon with the powers of evil still at work among and within us. We're inviting Christ to clean house, to come in, to find the demons among us, and through the power of his word to expel them once and for all. We can't do it alone. If we could, we would have done it by now. We need Jesus. He alone can get into those hard to reach places in each of our hearts that have been tacitly harboring or at least permitting these injustices in our world. But to recognize how Jesus is wor at work on this front, we may have to take a closer look than we think. To hear that authority that comes from God, we may need to listen to someone who doesn't sound the way we expect or doesn't look the way we expect. If we could hear the answers from the voices we're used to attending to, we would have heard them already. If we could find the solutions in the places that we're used to looking, we would have seen them already. When Jesus comes into that synagogue, he doesn't have the title or the position the scribes have. He's not wearing the right clothes. He's not from the same neighborhood. He doesn't have the pedigree, but they find out that he has the authority and he shows it by stepping up, by showing up and doing the dirty work. 
By his word, he expels the demon, threatening the life and liberty of this man. By his power, he exterminates the unclean spirit and makes room instead for the Holy Spirit to come in. Healing has arrived, and it is the, has the power to grant new life. In the places deemed by society as unredeemable, it has arrived in the person of Jesus. It has arrived in his holy word. It has arrived in the second chances and the cracks in our communities and in real, valuable, redeemable lives. Jesus is here and he's ready to get to work. Time to open our broken hearts and let him in. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one, one God, God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, of, of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe, believe in, in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only, only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to all to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church in its ministry, let us pray. Have mercy, Have o, mercy God. o God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals, and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizations, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy. O God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV AIDS, those facing COVID-19, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need, we especially lift before you, Sally, Sally, Irma, Irma, Grace, Grace, Bill, Bill, Aloha, Aloha, Doug, Doug, Marie, Marie, Stephen, Stephen, Phil, Phil, Sally, Sally, Bob, Bob, Lillian, Lillian, Janice, Janice, Lynn, Lynn, Chuck, Chuck, Megan, Megan, and those we name before you now, John. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the concerns of this congregation, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, and for other needs in our community, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with open arms wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. By the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come and be fed. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. can't think of any um, announcements that I need to highlight beyond what you read in your parish notes. Thank you to everyone who made um, arrangements to be with us for the annual meeting last week. 
Um, and like I said, just please um, keep checking your weekly e-news and your parish notes for updates. Now receive this charge and blessing. People of God, you have been called to be disciples of Christ. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. And God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. <laughs> Peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh.